Okay, welcome to the Merch Corner. I'm back here with Jerry Branham again. We did a segment on synthol and it's his newsletter and some things that this does to your body when there's just a world of information here I haven't even tapped the surface I mean I could talk all day to Jerry and never get bored for a minute but he talks in terms that are really really up there and you got to understand what he's saying because he's he knows what's best for you the one thing I want to talk about is for you guys out there that write to me that are 40 years old 42 48 reaching 50 and 60 and 70 and maybe beyond and you ask me what can I do to, to stay in shape because you get around 42 45 the belly fat starts coming you start to get a little saggy and um, it's hard it's just really hard yeah. so I mean what do you advise to these guys that you know some have been to gyms some have taken off gyms for 10 years they're back after a 10-year layoff and they want to get back in shape again what do you recommend for someone like that okay first of all I, I, I want to give you a thing a, a statement it sounds like a cliche but it's true and that is, you're never too old to work out. Right. There's no matter no how many years. I mean, I get a lot of guys, Rick, you probably do, who come up to say, hey, Jerry, you know, I used to work out, but then, you know, I got married, had kids, yeah. and I had a job, and I had to All give time. it up. And now, you know, here I am, like, like 50 years old, and I got this big gut, and I went to my doctor, my cholesterol's through the roof. I, you know, I, I want to work out, but I'm almost afraid to go to the gym. Yeah. But you can't think like that for, uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, what they didn't know years ago is that weight training and aerobics but weight training also in regard to the muscles is literally the only known true fountain of youth uh, when you work out believe it or not what they found in studies is when you work out this is incredible you, you with when you lift weights I should say you turn off hundreds hundreds of genes in the uh, muscles which actually age the muscles but you have to exercise, you have to provide yes, a stimulus. Of course, you have to, so yeah. if you think about that, when you're lifting weights, you're actually turning back the clock. And here's the proof of the pudding. Tufts University actually has done a number of studies with really old people. I'm talking about 80s, 90s. A lot of the men had walkers. They had, and, and they've never worked out. They've never worked out. Okay. And they were in walkers for 20 years, 30 years, we're at 90s, right? Right. They had them go to the gym. Now, these guys are weak. I mean, they're not going to... No, no. They're, they're not, not going to be using Phil Heath's arm routine. Right, you know? okay. So they go to the gym. They have them do leg extensions with ridiculously lightweight, right? But they, they supervise them. They make sure they do it right. In every single case, these people have gained a, a, a tremendous amount of muscle strength. And guess what? Because of that, these guys that had walkers for 30 years... They throw their walkers away. They don't need them. Right. Now, here's the point. Uh, relating now, a lot of us, luckily, thank God, don't aren't on walkers yet, right? But the, the, the notion, the point is when you go back after no matter how many years you go back, the muscles will respond. They don't turn off. They don't die. Yes, they atrophy if you're not exercising. But there's another aspect that a lot of people don't know. Rick, do you, over the years, we've heard that expression, muscle memory. Right. Now, muscle memory roughly defined is... If you have, once you develop a certain, let's say you have a 19 inch arm, right? And for some reason you can't train for a couple of months. You don't do any working out, no lifting weights at all. The muscle shrinks if it's mm -hmm. not stimulated, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what happens is a phenomenon that's been noted ever since I was a kid. I mean, they call it muscle memory. What happens is when you go back to the gym within, and you start lifting again, I know, Cole, you can't lift as heavy, but you start. Right, right sure. Within a short time, maybe it might take three months. Boom, the muscle's back. Right, or less. Right, or less. It can yeah. happen less, depending on your genetics, right? Now, nobody really knew why this occurred, but about two years ago, they actually found the actual reason. It has to do with something called uh, uh, satellite cells, which are muscle stem cells, which are needed to build muscle size and repair muscle tissue. But when, they, when you stimulate them, they deposit what they call nuclei in the muscles, right? So even if the rest of the muscle shrinks, I'm trying to simplify it, you know, because obviously this is complex. Yeah. Even if, let's say, the rest of the muscle shrinks, that nuclei that you d put in there from working out, it doesn't go away. It stays. So it's almost like a dormant little, you know, controlling factor. So that is muscle memory. It is muscle memory. Okay. So in other words, muscle memory is real. It's not something that we all came up with. It's a real phenomenon. It exists. And interestingly enough, you know, there's another uh, frequent statement that, uh, you know, when you, get, when you, uh, when you, you know, you've seen the bodybuilders, the pros, when they get off steroids, a lot of these guys, like, their bodies disappear. They disappear, right. We've seen it with Arnold, we've seen it with all these guys. I mean, you see him three months after the contest, hey, who the hell is that guy? Yeah, you see it all the time. Is that the guy who was Mr. Olympia? What, exactly. what, what happened? Exactly. You know, and, and, they, you know, and the usual uh, uh, reasoning for, for the, the uh, loss of the muscle is, hey, he got off steroids. 
the guy was all steroids, and you know, he get off. It was all water. Yeah. When he gets off steroids, he's got no muscle. But guess what? You know what? When you take steroids, you also develop this muscle. You develop additional uh, nuclei even above that of weight training. Right. Okay. So what happens is, again, even though these guys shrink, they still have the muscle memory there, and th that was actually put there by the steroid use. So in effect, you don't really lose the muscle. It looks like you lose the muscle. What happens is the muscles atrophy. It goes back to the old adage about your muscle turning to fat. Right. Muscles don't turn to fat, they're two different tissues. Two different tissues. What totally. happens is as people age, and from not working out, the muscles atrophy or shrink, and if they continue to, to, continue to eat without exercise, the calories are stored and it becomes fat. So to the naked eye, it mm -hmm. looks like they turned into fat. All that, but it's really, fat over the top of the muscle. Yeah, exactly, that's right. what happens. So it turns out, so when these guys go back on steroids, we're talking about the, the uh, competitive bodybuilders, they blow right up. Right. And it's not just the steroids, it's the fact that they never really lost the muscle. Right. It just atrophied because, you know what I mean, but the, the actual, let's but say, <coughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, a lot of the raw reason is when they go off and the contest is over, they don't even train. They don't train. Yeah, for like a couple of months. Right. So of course everything's going to go down. In fact, you know, it's funny that you say that because I wrote about a study a long time ago, about 15, 20 years ago. It was done by the Navy. And they were, and the, the, the actual, they were trying to figure out, for the, this is for the Navy SEALs. They were trying to figure out uh, if, uh, you know, if you give these guys steroids, you know, and, uh, and, and, they, lay, and they stop training, you know, I mean, W is the muscles going to shrink? I mean, I mean, uh, you know. So what they did is they took two groups. One group they they uh, they kept on steroids, right? The other group they they uh, they didn't. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The one group was on steroids, and the other group wasn't on steroids. One group trained, and the other group didn't train, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of divided up in three mm -hmm. ways. Now what they found is the guys that got off steroids, right? Get this but continue to train hard as if they were on steroids. In other words, they pushed the weight. Right, right, right. They, ju you know, they went to, fa whatever. They, you know, they lost almost no gains that they made from steroids. Okay. The guys that, that got off steroids, but got, let, you, know, you know, started doing this yeah. stuff and didn't, you know, didn't miss the workouts, they lost muscle. All right, so how does this apply to guys over who want to get in shape? Their testosterone drops, they mm -hmm. don't, they don't, their body doesn't recover like they used to, they can't put on the size they want to right. put at 45, 50 years old. Okay. This happens, right? It does happen. And why is that? Unfortunately, in a, in a percentage of men pass, uh, uh, when you get to 40, and, and uh, at least 50% of men, your testosterone does start to drop. Right. right, this I know. Now, so what I would suggest, you know, uh, for rule number one, if is if is it let's say we're, uh, we're talking about a hypothetical man let's say he hasn't worked out for 20 years okay. but he wants to go back in gym and get in shape get healthy and look better right what I suggest is he goes to his doctor and has a test for done for testosterone absolutely absolutely and he should have two tests done actually three he should have a total testosterone mm -hmm. and he should have what they call free testosterone because free testosterone is the actual bioactive form T total testosterone doesn't really mean anything so if you have a you can have a normal testosterone and still be low right. Okay. You also want to, I, I suggest what they call a high sensitivity estrogen test, just to see if, because if you're making too much estrogen, it's going to kind of like yeah. le leave you a little fatty looking. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. So just, I throw that in also. If his testosterone is below a certain point, and I'm going to give you the number, here's a, here's a rule of, of thumb. They just, I actually wrote about this in a study. To, to build muscle in the gym, over, and you're over 40, I'm talking a man now, you have to have a testosterone of at least 800. Okay. A total testosterone, 800. Now, if you have less than that, let's say 500, or the average guy, let's say 50, has about 500 or 400, that's okay. You'll be healthy. That You're not deficient. But in other words, you're, you're going to have trouble building muscle. you got to have it at least 800, right? Okay. So if you, you know, what you do is if it's below, if you have your testosterone tested and you, want, and you really are, want to build muscle, then you might want to, you know, ask your doctor to put you on, uh, let's say, a... Uh, you oh, know, they, they have the gel patches. The gel patches, there, yeah. you know, whatever you prefer, you know. But and then the other thing they need to do is clean up their diet. Absolutely clean up the diet because there's a lot of foods that actually interfere with testosterone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for example, uh, well, just to take uh, something right off the head, if your diet doesn't contain at least 25% fat, your body doesn't make testosterone. You, it's almost like it stops. Mm -hmm. It has to have a, a minimal 25% of calories have to be from fat, and there's two kinds of fat that work. One is monosaturated fat, like in olive oil. The other one, or macadamia nuts, the other one is, believe it or not, saturated fat. The same kind of fat that's supposed to be so bad for you, <laughs> you know. And the, by the way, fish oil and yeah. some of those so-called yeah. good fats, yeah. they don't do crap for testosterone. How about the coconut oil? 
Unfortunately, no. Oh, okay. Coconut does not affect testosterone. Okay. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry, it does. Because it does contain a little bit of saturated fat in there. So, yes, it will help. All right, so in closing, these guys can't get back in shape if they want to. Yes, they can. It's going to take time, and you've got to be persistent. In other words, you've got to, you got to, you know, you're going to be sore. You know, in the beginning, it's going to be tough. You're going to be a little weak if you haven't right. trained in a while. Right. But, you know, if you give it a chance, you will be shocked at what you can do. I mean, you can. I, I'm not going to say that you could look as good at, at 60 as you were at 20. I'm not going to lie. No, but you're good. But you could look. You could change your whole body to the point where the people in your family people are going to say, "Yeah, hey they, boy, what are you doing?" If, they have, if, if family members haven't seen you in a while, they're going to they're going to like <laughs> say, "Who is this guy?" You know, as you get older, and and uh, I, I, right, my life now, I want to have a lean physique. I don't right. care about being bulky and heavy. Right. But, I mean, same with me. And it's not important to me to have a twenty inch arm or whatever. Yeah. I've been there, done that. It's okay. Yeah. But I want to stay lean and hard because that's what makes me look better, and I feel better in my clothes. I look healthier right. at seventy. And so uh, my diet is clean, and I don't have the, the. I'm not as hungry as I ever was. Right. You know, I don't have the desire to sit and eat large amounts of food. My calories maybe two thousand a day of, of that. It's excellent, but that's enough yeah. for me. I don't need any more than that. Yeah, uh, and I still maintain about two nineteen body weight, which I think is kind of too heavy. I'd rather be two twelve. Right. I get down two twelve, I start to look emaciated. Yeah. I've never been even to two ten or two hundred in four years. It's because you have a lot, you've built up so much muscle. I got a lot of muscle mass. Yeah, so it's it's heavy. Yeah. But um, I suggest anybody out there in the mid forties, forties, you know what? Listen to Jerry contact him contact me you want to get in shape there's a way to do it and, and you'll have an extended life if you do it's, absolutely it's, uh, my, my mom lived till 97 god bless her i mean she she and she didn't do anything right yeah, <laughs> no but she listened to me and she ate pretty good and um, you know she didn't work out oh, wait I, I just want to add one thing though yeah. real fast yeah i just came across a review just yesterday as a matter yeah. of fact a brand new review in one of the medical journals what, what they found is, uh, you know, we talked about weight training. Weight training is the key to keeping... Yeah, there's no question shot. about it. But you can't... I also... This is very important for people over 40. I feel I have to add <clears> it. <throat> you also want to do some aerobic exercise. And even... It, for both fat loss, it, it, it's the best thing to control body composition. But there's another reason. Because what this review... It was a huge review, very technical. What it found was absolutely shocking. What aerobic exercise does is it keeps your arteries, it literally prevents the aging of your blood vessels. Mm -hmm. It keeps your nitric oxide system alive. It prevents your blood, uh, uh, your uh, arteries from stiffening. Stiffening arteries is the precursor to atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease and heart attacks and strokes. What's, what's it, your views on taking folic acid for that? Folic acid's good, but in other words, you have to have the, it's, it's the kind of like the onrush of blood, right. the, you know, that from, that's produced throughout the whole body from aerobics. Okay. That's what keeps your arteries young so you want to always, always include an aerobic component along with your weight training especially if you're over 40. I like the aerobic weight workout I like going non-stop you could do that yeah that. it's just more invigorating I don't like walking the treadmill I ride yeah. the bike a little bit but doing fast workouts with the weights you have to do it really fast I'm talking about 30 seconds oh, or I know. less rest I know I mean uh, and you can do that when you don't have a partner yeah, you can, you do, can it. do it by yourself. Yeah, well, we I did it years ago when I did the uh, high intensity training. I went from like I did like six exercises in a row, no rest. Well, we explained <laughs> your newsletter on synthol that that yeah. uh, interview that we did, and he went into detail. And if you want to see that, watch that, and listen to it. But he does have a newsletter. It's going to be out. You can get it for ten dollars a month. It's well worth it. It's thirty something pages. Yeah, the and, first issue. Is and there's no advertisements. It's all about getting yourself in shape and doing the right thing. And Jerry knows he's the guru of this. I, I swear by him. I've known him forty five years, and he knows what he's talking about. Written for every major magazine around. And I want to thank you for being here again, Jerry. Sure. This good, is great. Good I to see you. Actually, got you out over the hill a visit. Always, always good to see you. <laughs> and stay tuned. I know this guy, folks. I know this guy for 45 years. Yeah, I'm 46 now. Yeah, see, I met him when he was a baby. In fact, I was. I changed his diaper. Yeah, and I still work. <laughs> and now it depends. <laughs> so stay tuned for more Rex Corners. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll see you next time. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.